The mini course that you're about to watch about how to pitch clients successfully and confidently is part of my larger program called the Virtual Assistant Business Blueprint. Now, in my VA Blueprint, I go into over 80 modules to help you set your foundations, establish your rates, find your dream clients, and I help you go through the entire process of building out your business and growing it sustainably and profitably. What you're about to see is just a handful of snippets from one of the modules about pitching. I wanted to give you guys a sneak peek into the content of my course. And every time in the mini course you're about to watch, I reference scripts or templates or downloads. I just want you to know that my students in the VA Business Blueprint are eligible to download those scripts. Part of my program is that I have included over 50 scripts, templates, emails, etc. These are real things that I use for my business to communicate with my clients. But my hope is that by watching this video, you find a ton of value. You learn how to pitch clients confidently and you start getting business. We're getting to my most favorite part of this entire program, and it's about pitching. The reason I like it so much is because this is where the greatest amount of transformation tends to come from. New virtual assistants, in fact, new freelancers, tend to have the most freak out moments over pitching. That's because it feels insanely scary. It feels vulnerable. This is where you have to actually present your services and your rates to someone and, and hope that it goes well. My goal for you over this next handful of lectures is to help you feel more calm and confident in your pitches. And we're going to talk about pitches in two different forms, essentially. We're going to talk about warm pitches versus cold pitches. Now, a warm pitch means that you and your prospective client have already made contact in some form. Maybe you met somebody on LinkedIn. Maybe a potential client reached out to you because of something interesting that you shared, or it could be any uh, social media. You know, social media is great for discovery. If you've had any sort of conversation in person, online, etc., it means that this person essentially knows that you're a VA, they might know a little bit about your services, and now it's time to get a little deeper into your business, your UVP, and what makes you a good fit. So that, that's a warm connection. Warm connections are my favorite type of pitches because they're, they're less hard. The person already kind of knows you. They kind of know what you're about. They like your vibe. There's something you're putting out that they're picking up. So we're gonna talk about how to pitch a warm connection, and then we're gonna segue into how to pitch cold connections. Now a cold pitch means that the person that you're presenting your services to is a total stranger. They've never seen your social media, they've never seen your website, they don't know your name, your face, they don't know anything about you or your business. Cold pitches are more difficult, but they have their place in our business. So we're gonna talk about both and we're going to talk about how the pitching process is different for each school of thought. So how do we turn a casual online acquaintance into a potential client? The answer is the warm pitch. And we know the benefit of a warm pitch. They've already interacted with you in some capacity, whether they've commented on your social media posts or engaged with you on an online forum, or maybe you met them in real life. These interactions are preludes to a potential business relationship. They've given you your attention, and now it's your turn to captivate them with your UVP and your services. The first thing we want to do if an interaction is going well and you've met someone that you think this could be a potential client is send them a message that's short, concise, detailed, and ideally gets them off of their computer and onto a phone call with you. The real magic happens when you are speaking with someone voice to voice. If you prefer to do a video call face to face, that's fine too. But in my experience, I found that most clients are comfortable with phone calls. I myself as a VA am comfortable with a phone call. And think of this call as just a conversation. However, the reason I'm imploring you to get them offline and onto a phone call with you 
is because the real magic happens when you're having a conversation with someone. People hire people that they like. And so if you can bring your most energetic, confident, buoyant personality to a phone call, you're already winning half the battle. Now in this particular lecture, I'm including a script. It's a very simple script, but the intention is to help you get a prospect on the phone with you. And once you two have settled on a date and a time that you will connect, it's time to really personalize your pitch and craft your message, which we will talk about in the next lecture. So you've warmed up a pitch online, you've asked them to get on a phone call with you, they agreed, now what? Now we get to the art of research and personalization. It is not simply enough for you to have a casual conversation online with a potential client. What you need to do at this point, if a warm connection is interested in talking to you about your services, is you need to put in some research time. I highly recommend at this point that you go back through and look at your interactions together thus so far. Have they expressed any particular pain points to you? Or did you share a piece of information that really resonated with them? That is worth noting in and of itself, because again, we're trying to get a better sense for their problems in their business, their pain points, and or on the flip side, what are they passionate about? What really resonated with them? If you shared a particular tip or tool, uh, maybe a productivity hack that really got them jazzed, can you ask yourself, what was it about that? Why do you think that that tip got them so excited in the first place? What might that productivity tip be solving? The next thing I want you to do is go through all the accounts that you can find about this person. I want you looking at their LinkedIn, their social media accounts, whether they are personal or work related. If they have a website, I want you going to that website, read their bio, read their company about, what is it that they do, what kind of customers do they serve, etc., etc. The more you can put together a research doc about this person, about their company, the better off this phone call will be. Recall back in an earlier lecture where when we were starting to go through the client avatar worksheet and I said to you, dream up your dream client, dream big, and put yourself in their shoes and imagine if you can, and I know sometimes this is a real guess, but imagine what their pain points and struggles are. This is the kind of research that we want to do again for your warm pitch. Because if we can tailor our services to this specific client, we're putting ourselves in a fantastic position. In the next module, we're gonna pull back up your UVP and I'm gonna show you how to use the UVP that you've previously crafted to tailor your pitch and your services to this potential client. By now, you've got a date set on your calendar, you know when you're talking to your potential client, you've done your research, you have a pretty good idea about what it is that they do, their company, what they do on the day-to-day, -day, and possibly even what problems or pain points they might be facing in their business. The next thing we wanna do is really personalize your UVP or your special sauce to this particular client. Now here's how I like to think about pitches. I think of it less as a sales pitch. I don't like feeling salesy. I don't like feeling schmarmy, like I'm trying to push my services onto somebody. At this point, if I've crafted my UVP, I know what my services are. I know what makes my brand as a VA so special. And I, what I know because I know their pain points and I've done more research on them, I know how my services are best suited for this client. Now it is time for me to put that all together. So instead of foisting a sales pitch upon this person, I think of it as how can I simply offer value through a conversation? I'm gonna give you a quick examples of what a salesy pitch looks like versus what a tailored value conversation looks like. So if you haven't done any research, you really are not clear on your UVP and you're just like, I'm just gonna pitch this person my services, all my services. You get on the phone with a potential client and you're like, hey, uh, it's great to meet you. Thanks for hopping on the call with me. Uh, I offer general admin services. I do travel, I do bookkeeping, I check people's inboxes. And uh, yeah, that's what I do. So when do you want to start? Chances are your client will run away. Chances are they will feel overwhelmed. They will feel like you're not offering any tailored value to them. Now, let's pretend that you did do your research. You understand their company a little better. You've looked through your previous interactions. You, you have a better idea about what they might be struggling with. 
a value driven pitch might sound like this. Hey, I noticed you had a comment online about how time consuming you find content planning and content creation. As a VA, one of my specialties is content strategy. And I've even helped clients reclaim up to 10 hours a week by taking over their content and content repurposing. Is that something that I could help you with? Hopefully those two simple examples give you more clarity about the difference of somebody who just gets on a phone with anyone and you're like, I do this and blah, 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 and it's, it's vague, it's salesy, versus the second example where you're focusing more on the value that your services can bring to a client. That's way more powerful because you're essentially painting yourself as a partner in their business, a partner who's there to support their goals and help save them time. Now I know this part of the lecture specifically, the connecting your UVP with a specific person, that can feel challenging, especially when you've never done it before. I promise you it does get easier the more you pitch people. But having said all that, if you go into your very first pitch ever knowing your UVP and being able to answer this statement in like one to two succinct sentences, and then you can connect that UVP with their pains, their problems, you're already providing great value. You're already providing a conversation in which you talk about the value that your services bring and how they're so perfectly tailored to this potential client. Let's talk about the concept of a credibility doc, what this is and how it can help your business even before you get on the phone with your potential client. This credibility doc falls in a in-between step it comes after you've already set a date and a time for a call and the credibility doc comes before you actually get on the phone with them. So you set a call, but you haven't talked to them yet. That's where this credibility doc comes in. A credibility document is essentially a PDF. Uh, it can be as long or as short as you want, although I do challenge you to keep it brief. But this credibility doc could be a really powerful tool to get your potential client hyped up for your call. So think of this PDF as a hype machine doing some of the work for you to get this client excited about your phone call. Now in this lecture, I have created a template for a credibility document for you. All you have to do is open the template and fill in your own details. And the credibility doc goes through more details about you, your business, your services, uh, and more importantly, it includes testimonials. Now, if you're brand spanking new to this business and you don't have any testimonials yet, don't worry, this credibility doc is optional. You certainly don't have to send this to clients before you connect with them. I find that it does help build excitement and it can provide social proof in the form of um, concrete testimonials and the benefits of working with you. But like I said, if you don't have any clients to fall back on or any testimonials yet, don't worry, this credibility doc will come in handy later in your business. As you collect testimonials, you'll be able to fill out this credibility doc more succinctly. When you download the template that I'm providing, by the way, through Canva, uh, if you have a Canva account, it can be free or pro, but if you have an account, you are able to change the fonts, the colors, the layout, the pictures. You can change everything, but I wanted to give you guys a guide for how you might want to use a credibility doc. Now the document itself will have details about your UVP, your special sauce. Once again, we are touching back on what makes your services unique and how and why can it serve this client best. So again, pull your research into this document. If you've done your research about this particular client. What is it that they're struggling with? What are their pain points? What is their business like? Uh, you're gonna include that in the document. You're gonna include your UVP, what makes you so perfectly tailored for this person. You're going to include a page about your services. I don't want a lot of verbiage here or details. This is just meant to be a quick visual for your clients to look at before they get in the call. Again, we're just hyping them up. So you are giving them a little glimpse of insight into the core services that you offer for your business. And then the bulk of your credibility document will be testimonials. Um, so again, if you have testimonials or you have current clients you're working with, maybe you have one client, ask them for a testimonial. 
Ask them about what's working well. How have you helped them? Have you saved them time? Have you saved them sanity? You want to include those tidbits into this document as well, because testimonials offer something that you just can't, and that's called social proof. I could tell every client on the planet that I'm the best virtual assistant on earth, but unless I have testimonials backing me up, that's just me talking. And again, this document is a nice to have. It's not a must have, but a nice to have. Meaning if you don't have it in place and you don't send it to people before your calls, it's not gonna make or break your business. Come back to this template at any point when you start to gather testimonials and you're a little bit more sure of yourself and your services, come back to this particular lecture and, uh, and complete that document for yourself at a later point in time. So the warm connection's been made, the phone date's been sent, maybe you sent a credibility document, and now the day has come for you to actually talk to this person and give them your pitch. First thing I want you to do is dance it out because your body is probably holding on to a lot of nerves right now. Even after 12 years of doing this business, I still get nervous doing pitches. I don't know if that part ever goes away, but I have learned how to circumnavigate the nerves. And my best solution for you guys is to dance it out. <laughs> Maybe I dance this way. I'm a punch dancer. Five to 10 minutes before your call, put on your favorite song. I want you to physically move your body because physical movement helps get your heart rate up and it tricks your brain until your brain is like, we're just having a great time with this song. I'm not nervous, I'm excited. And a major magical shifts, sh shift happens when you tell your brain, you're not nervous, you're just excited. You will be more in your body and less in your mind, if that makes sense. I find that physical movement prior to a call helps keep my voice calm. I no longer have that weird it just helps me get a little more grounded. So that's my tip number one for you. The next thing I want you to do is remind yourself that pitching is a conversation where you are just providing value. You're not selling, you're not selling yourself, you're not foisting this weird, vague, salesy, icky language on anyone who doesn't already need or want your services, all right? Just remember, they're already interested, you have a great business, now it's just time for you to have this conversation where you can add value. In my experience, 90% of the time when you get on a call with a potential client, these people usually have never hired an assistant before. They themselves don't know how to lead this phone conversation. It certainly is different than if you were interviewing for a job. Because if you're inter interviewing for a corporate job, those corporations usually have an HR team or they have a team member that's done a lot of hiring before. So they kind of know the flow, they kind of had pre-prepared questions and they lead the conversation. More often than not, I find that clients will just start the call with like, hey, so tell me about yourself which I will fully admit is my least favorite question. This is where most virtual assistants absolutely lose their client's interest, right within that first question. When clients ask you, so tell me about yourself, what they're really asking for is, how can you and your services help me? What they're not asking for is, where you live, how many siblings you have, if you have children, if you have pets, where you've been traveling to lately. It's not really as friendly as you think it is. <laughs> but of course, you can't just skip over that question and be like, I'm fine, now let me tell you about my business. So when a client opens with tell me about yourself, I always first and foremost bring it to a place of gratitude where I say, well, thanks so much for hopping on this call with me. I really have been looking forward to this call for a while. Open with gratitude. And then what I'll do is go into my UVP. If you don't already have a pretty drilled down UVP. I want you to go back to the UVP lessons and try to craft one to two sentences that really get into your services, what makes you so special and how you help serve your clients. But I use my UVP to answer the question, so tell me about yourself. I will usually say, I'm Erin, I've been a virtual assistant for 12 years, I specialize in luxury corporate travel, I see that you are an avid traveler yourself for your business at blah, blah, blah. Tell me how I can help you. It can be as simple as that. And that really kicks off the conversation between you and this other person. Now, if you're somebody who struggles with small talk or struggles to have a conversation with somebody, or conversely, maybe your potential client 
is so clueless. <laughs> Maybe it's like pulling teeth. Maybe they're not good at conversing. That's okay. I have a document that is also attached to this module that has guiding questions for your pitch call. Now I have this document pulled up myself whenever I'm doing client pitches. Cause if we get to a point where the conversation is waning or it's not flowing as naturally, or I'm like, uh Oh, this calls in trouble girl. And I got to turn it around. I will go to this document and I will ask them questions that I think will help move the conversation along. Some of those questions include things like, so what brings you to virtual assistance? IE I'm asking them, what are you struggling with? What are your pain points? Now, if I've already done my homework, I've already done my UVP homework and I kind of have an understanding standing for their pain points, then I am hopefully more equipped to be like, oh, you know, you mentioned this pain point. I do this service. I've helped clients do X, Y, Z. I also will ask clients on this phone call. Have you ever worked with a VA before? If somebody has worked with a VA before, I will always follow up with the question. Oh, that's great. What worked well and what didn't go well with that previous relationship? Again, asking these types of questions can help the conversation flow more naturally and will also give you more insights into this person. And now the call is done. Sit down, relax, let those nerves in your heart calm down a little bit. You did it. You did your first pitch call, congratulations. So now you might be asking yourself what comes next. Most new freelancers skip this step and this follow-up step is super crucial to this whole pitch process. If you have a call with somebody and you just leave it as great, well, I'll talk to you whenever there's really no call to action. There's really no urgency and there's really nothing like you've indicated nothing to your client that like you're interested, you want to move this along. You're ready to start working together today. What I want you to do is when you hang up the phone, I want you to craft a follow-up email. The email includes a a nice opening, like, hey, so-and-so, it was great to chat with you today. I had a wonderful time learning more about you and your business. Then I want you to go into bullet points of here is what we discussed. Here are the issues you're facing. Here are your problems. Here are your immediate goals that you're hoping to achieve. Okay, it's just a recap of the conversation. And then underneath that, you're including a section on here are my services. Here are the direct services I offer that answer your pain points. Here are the services that I provide that will be the solution to your problems. Or here is how I propose I help you meet your goals in a timely manner. Like this document just sums it all up. So you're basically taking the entire phone conversation you had, you're putting it in writing so that your client can remember what you talked about. You'll remember what you guys talked about. And, and you want to include this is important. You want to include a call to action at the end where you say, I'm really looking forward to working with you. I'm including a copy of my contract. This gem that I'm throwing out right now at you is probably one of my most secret, but amazing things that I do to close a deal. Before I started including my contract in the follow-up email, uh, before I did that, I would simply send a follow-up email and I'd be like, I'm so excited. Here's what we talked about. Here are your pain points. Here how is how I can help you. And then I would kind of just end it with like, uh, you know, looking forward to working with you. Let me know if you want to move forward or not. And I found that sometimes clients would sit on that email. They would not respond right away. I would have to send them follow-up emails the next week being like, hey, any thoughts on my services? And I thought to myself once, Erin, you need to be more direct. You have to capitalize on the momentum of this excitement and the phone call. So what I started doing was writing up my contract. We are talking about contracts in like the next two lectures, by the way, so it's coming. So as soon as we got off the phone, I would send them my recap email and I would say, I'm including my contract. It includes the services that we talked about, the scope of work, my rates, et cetera. All the information that they need to know about your business is in the contract. Uh, and then I say, when you sign the contract, we're ready to start working together. And I have found that it's actually a lot easier to close clients when you phrase it as, as soon as you sign this document, we are ready to hit the ground running. When we talk about contracts in the next few modules, remember, you're going to be including your contract in the follow up post pitch call email. So if you need to, after you do your contracts, come back to this lecture 
to make sure that you've got it all together. I hope you guys enjoyed this mini course. It was a 30 minute whirlwind walking you through the difference between warm and cold pitches and how you can start pitching your services to your ideal clients. If you would like more information about how to find and define your ideal client, how to create a client avatar, how to really assess what your strongest skills are and which skills are in demand. I cover all of these things and so much more in the VA Business Blueprint, which is available on my website. So head to erinbooth.com. I sincerely hope to see you guys in the program. We have a ton of great virtual assistants in there already. And the programs come with monthly, monthly, monthly group coaching uh, with me, which is live. This is your opportunity to hop on a private link with me and ask me questions as they pertain to your business. Thanks so much for accompanying me on your pitching journey.